All right, folks, uh, listen up. Today we're about to unveil the gritty truth that often gets swept under the rug when it comes to the cost of living here in Australia. All right, we're set to go. Uh, brace yourselves because this is no fairy tale. We're venturing into the realm of grocery shopping, uh, one of many things we'll be discussing, uh, where the prices will hit you like a punch to the gut. Get ready to witness firsthand the harsh reality of inflated costs and everyday, uh, everyday essentials that drain your hard-earned dollars. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we're going to be delving deeper into the depths of average incomes, sky-high rents, suffocating mortgage payments, and the relentless squeeze of bills and expenses. It's a dark and daunting world, my friends, um, and it's time we shed a light on its own shadows. Uh, join us as we unravel the harsh truths and confront the stark reality that challenges the notion of an easy and luxurious life for all foreigners. It's a stigma that I'm really here to break down. Um, we're here to dispel the illusion, guys, break the stereotypes and expose the harsh underbelly of surviving in this unforgiving land. And b believe me, it's it's not easy. Uh, prepare yourselves for a stark and unfiltered, uh, unfiltered breakdown of the financial struggles that lurk behind the glitz and glamour. We're here to face the raw truth, even if it means shattering some preconceived notions along the way. So grab your courage, <laughs> tighten your purse strings, and brace yourselves for a journey that will hopefully open your eyes to the harsh realities of the Australian cost of living, the uh, Australian dream which is fading quite quickly. This is not for the faint of heart, but it's time to face the darkness head on. Stay tuned for a critical exploration that will hopefully challenge your perceptions, give you a lot of information and some insight, and make you question the myth of an easy life in the land down under. Alrighty guys, so we're coming up to our local grocery store here in uh, North Point. So it's about five minutes from the house. Um, at least that's one convenience we have. We have everything that we could possibly ever need quite close. But um, yeah, it doesn't make too much of a difference. Um, the fuel station's coming up, so I thought I'd actually take this opportunity just to show you the, um, the display board for the prices of fuel um, and give you an idea of how much fuel costs here in Australia. The prices do vary from state to state, location and region to region, but um, here it is coming up on the left, guys. So um, yeah, shows you the price for diesel and unleaded. There it is, honey. I don't know if you guys can see that from a distance. It might be a little bit far, but... Um, yeah, it's probably not going to get it, but dollar is, what does it say? So, unleaded 91 is $1.83, and diesel at the moment is $1.87. So, we'll do an Excel spreadsheet and break it down. Um, but yeah, and we're going to a cheaper store. It's called Aldi. It's a German store here in Australia. So, they don't have all the supplies what a main chain would have, like Coles or Woolworths here. Um, but... They, they do have most of the essentials. Sometimes you might have to run across the road to go buy something um, from Coles or from Woolies or, you know, go to a bigger shopping centre to get some extra stuff that you might need, some specialty things, but this has most of it. So it is a fair bit cheaper. Some things are a fair bit cheaper. Some things are the same. Some are more expensive. It just depends on the products that you're purchasing. Um, but anyway, we're going to be showing you all of this in a lot of detail. So let's go. We just got new microphones as well, guys, so it's going to be interesting to hear how they perform in the wind. Just, um, yeah, let us know if the audio quality is any good. I'm sure I'll know as soon as I upload the video too, so. But it should be better than what they have been, so we did that for you guys. You want a little one? This one. Got some fruits, yep, fruits and veggies. Is, what do we got here? About four dollars a kilo. It's uh, I can't do the maths on that. That's maybe 150 pesos a kilo or so. 100% Australian banana. What else do you need, honey? Do you want to send me on a mission? No. Be nine dollars a kilo. Plus tomatoes, six dollars a kilo. 
little box of cocktail tomatoes. Three dollars eighty a kilo. I'll give them the final receipt anyway at the end so they can sort of see the quantity that we buy and how much it all costs. Some pre-made salads. They're not too bad too. Not a big fan of the meat here in this shop. They're a little bit definitely not butcher quality so probably not the healthiest full of fat and things that you don't really want. Yeah, maybe I'll get a bag of Carnsey apples. 800 grams, $5 for a bag. 800 grams, so that gives you about one, two, three, four, five, six apples. food in our bags, tie this up so it doesn't end up all over the back seat. So what's that? That's about three bags. Three bags, pretty full. And what was the price? It's $204. All right. So that's one thing we can tally up. $204 for three bags of food, guys. Um, I remember there were days where you used to be able to get like an entire deep trolley load for about a hundred bucks, half the price. So, yeah, I remember I used to do my food shops about seven, eight years ago. It cost me eighty to a hundred dollars a week. So, I'll carry it. It's Where's the price? At the bottom there, guys. See my finger? Focus, but. That's right. I'll give it to you later. <laughs> Hey guys, so here we are, as promised, we're back from our shop and we're sitting at the computer. I've done a Excel spreadsheet, a, um, a list, a breakdown of prices and figures here in Australia. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a screen recording here on my computer and I'll put this into the video so all of you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. You can see the prices of things like mortgages and rents and the price of fuel, food, registrations, uh, council rate, which in Philippines you guys call land tax. Um, so I'm going to be going really deep. I'm going to be giving you accurate figures from official statistical websites here in Australia um, and we're going to be dissecting uh, the cost of living and breaking down the fallacy that all Australians are rich, that all foreigners, Westerners, Americans, that we're rich. Um, every day is a struggle guys, every day is a fight to survive just like anywhere in the world um, and the dogma surrounding foreigners being incredibly wealthy uh, it's it's just plain wrong so um, not to say that everybody believes this not to say that everybody thinks that you know we're just money bags walking around on the street because I know that most people have respect and most people are pretty aware of the way that Western culture is and the exorbitant prices that afflict us so anyway we're, well let's get into this uh, where am I going so first off what I've done guys I've gone through and I'm giving you prices of houses. This is a median value, so you have an average value, which is usually below what the realistic figure is. Then you have a median value. Now the median value is what the average person is most commonly going to be looking at. That's the price range and that's what that's what normal people, that's what average everyday working class people target. Now, what I've done is I've gone through uh, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane and I've taken 
the statistical median price of homes, which I'm going to give you right here. So this is propertyupdate.com.au. This was published on the 1st of June, 2023. So literally a few weeks ago, guys. Uh, so here we are. This is the value that we want to take. This is the median dwelling price. Now, we have two here. We have the median dwelling price for our combined capital cities, which is, like I said, Perth, Brisbane, Melbourne, and Sydney, which is sitting at $779,155. Then the median dwelling price, including all capital cities and regional cities, such as where we live here in Toowoomba, the figure goes down a bit. It's $715,000 for an average house that's maybe three bedrooms, one bathroom or two bathrooms. In regional areas, you might be able to get a four bedroom and a bathroom, or maybe even two on a smaller lot. But I'm just giving you the most generic, the most down-to-earth accurate figures what you can afford to pay. So let's, I'm going to be very nice here by the way, everything that I've done, I've actually come down and I've rounded down on every single figure in this spreadsheet that I'm going to be showing you. So I'm basically giving Australia an unfair advantage by reducing the figures from what they actually are. And there are also probably a few things that I've forgotten about, but let's get into it. So the median dwelling price for Australia, let's take the lowest value, sits at $715,000 combined, regional and capital. So <clears throat> let's go to Melbourne on Google Maps. If you follow me here, so what I've done, I've taken where I used to live here, if you can see my mouse around Moorlbark, Bayswater North, Ringwood, Mount Evelyn, Lilydale, and I've taken an average from the city. This is further away, so the further away from the city we go, the cheaper things should be. So let's go east from Melbourne to an average point amongst that area where I used to live is 29, sorry, 29.25 kilometers, about 30 kilometers. Now let's go to Sydney. You can't go east because that's ocean. So from Sydney, I've gone 29.51 kilometers, which brings us to Seven Hills, uh, North Mead, Parramatta, uh, Quakers Hill. So in that vicinity. Then let's go to Sydney on the map. I've also, uh, sorry, this is Brisbane. Sorry guys, we just did Sydney. Brisbane. 24 kilometers. So Brisbane's slightly smaller. It's not as spread out as Melbourne and Sydney. So I took an average and we go 24 kilometers, which brings us here to Springfield, Springfield Central, Red Bank Plains, Red Bank, Goodna. So same distances or very similar distances. And now let's have a look at the house prices in these capital cities. Realestate.com.au. This is the most popular, most prominent real estate website here in Australia. So Everything that they give has to be dead on the money. It's 100% accurate. And these are the prices. These are the listings for properties here in Australia. So let's have a look. This is in Melbourne. If you can see my search results, I've got Ringwood, Murlbark. I've also included Roval, which is a little bit closer to the city. Roval is over here, if you can see that. So Ringwood, Murlbark, you get the point. So a two bedroom, one bathroom on 802 square meters in Ringwood. 1.1 million dollars well above 715 the median value so just to give you an idea of what we're paying here landscape drive in moral bark so moral bark a little bit further away from the city even slightly further than 30 kilometers in a straight line of course if you take the roads it's much further um, so it's a fair distance it's about an hour to get to the city uh, by car $750,000 to $820,000 for a three bedroom, two bathroom on 933 square meters. Still way, way above that $715,000 median. Uh, in Roeville, we have a three bedroom, one bathroom, 807 square meters, $1 million to $1.1 million. A two bedroom, two bathroom unit in Roeville on 391 square meter lot, 730 to $800,000. This little thing here, it, nothing special. It's a unit, so it's probably joined onto another house somewhere at the back, connected by a sound deadened wall or something like that. But this is just, this really highlights the fact that that median value is still well and truly under what the realistic property prices are and what the listings on uh, agency websites are. So it's, it's not cheap. Now let's go back to Sydney. We have our 30 kilometers. So let's go seven hills. Contact agent Sydney for some reason don't seem to list too many prices. Some, some do, some don't. 
Forget this, this is a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment, 48 square meters, $390,000. I'm not including that because the Australian dream, which is what this video is about, it's about owning your home, it's about having a backyard for your children to run around in, to have a, a pet, animals, dogs, cats. That's the Australian dream, that's why people come here. This is, this is what this entire culture and this society is based upon, is that everyone has the ability to earn to be able to achieve this and accomplish this, this, family, this family environment and this dream, right? So let's see, Sydney, Seven Hills, contact agents. All right, let's go to Parramatta, okay? Roughly the same distance. This old rundown shack, which probably needs another five, well, not five, let's say $200,000 worth of renovations to bring it up to a reasonable standard. 1.2 million to 1.3 million dollars, three bedroom, one bathroom. That's a duplex, so don't worry, that's more for investment, that's renting out two properties side by side. Let's go to Seven Hills, a four bedroom, one bathroom, on 714 square meters, 1.1 million dollars. You can see a trend starting to build here. Let's keep going, I'll find you one more. If I have time, there we go. Another one in Seven Hills. So remember guys, Seven Hills, about 30 k's from the CBD of Sydney. It's 1.2 million to 1.25 million for four beds, two baths, 929 square meters. It's a house. As you can see, it's also pretty old. Nothing special. Would need a fair bit of money put into it if you wanted to make it more modern and like a newer house that we see built today. So there we go, two capital cities. Let's go to the last one, Brisbane. Brisbane, which is quite a bit cheaper than these other two, than Melbourne and Sydney, but still. So let's go to Springfield, Red Bank and Goodna, 30 kilometers. Straight away, Springfield, we have a really nice house. Now, this you can already see a bit more value. This is a much nicer home than the other ones we were looking at for still an expensive price, but it's actually cheaper uh, than the other ones, which I probably wouldn't even touch with a you know 50 foot pole. Four bedrooms, three bathrooms, nice big house, four car garage, 700 square meters, 920,000. You can see the value for money there increasing quite a lot. This is, I could, I could see myself paying this for a house like that. It's still a death trap because that's a heck of a lot of money um, unless you have a really, really healthy deposit. But it's not bad. All right, four bedroom, two bathroom, 672 square meter lot in Forest Lake. So same area roughly, $780,000. So let's have a look, we'll get one more, we'll get one more, what have we got here? Okay, now we've got slightly cheaper, a slightly cheaper home, four bedroom, two bathroom on a very small lot, 322 square meters for $670,000 here in Forest Lake. So just again to reiterate, Forest Lake. So guys, this is, these are the house prices, you can see that maybe with the exception of one property on a pretty small lot, uh, yeah, you're well and truly over that $715,000 median value, which is higher than the average. The average is a cumulative, that's always a reduced figure. What you're going to pay, as you can see by these listings, is gonna be well and truly over the average and even well and truly over the median value. So what I've done is I have taken, let me see where it is. So I have taken the median Australian salary, which again is above the average, median's always above, of $71,516 per annum, which I got from this website here. So the annual salary as of 2023, see, 2023, is uh, sorry, $71,516,000 a year. Now, in pesos, that's 2,662,608,000 pesos a year, right here. See, now that, it, that blows people's minds because they look at that and go, your earnings are absolutely, they're, they're, they're skyrocket, they're just through the roof. How could you not afford to, you know, pay for everything and still be able to, you know, go on holidays and have lots of fun? Well. This is exactly what we're gonna break down, guys. I have done in the blue segments here, sections, sorry, it's not highlighting what I want, but these blue sections here, that's Australian dollars. In the green, I've done Filipino pesos to give you that conversion rate and to really show you, give you a good good idea of the prices and the expenditure and how how steep the inflation rate is here and how, how much we're actually forced to pay just to be able to have a life. So. What I've done is I've taken the lowest value 
of the property market here at 715,000 and I've entered that into a mortgage calculator. So here in Australia, we go to the bank, we get a mortgage, the minimum down payment is 10%. So 10% of, let's just, whatever, seven, sorry, 715,000 times 0 0.1, which is 10%, I did minus, 700, sorry guys, 15,000 times 0 0.1. So you need to have $71,500 cash available to give to the bank so that you can even secure that property. So if we do 715,000 minus our deposit, $71,500 leaves us with $643,500 remaining to pay. This is the loan. This is the money the bank gives us for the property. So let's go to one of the most popular banks here in Australia. They probably have some of the best interest rates. The interest rates have risen a lot. So for those of you who don't understand interest rates in uh, a country like Australia, they're variable. So when you get a loan, you might get one two, two three years ago at a one or two percent interest, and then that can fluctuate and go anywhere from one to 20 to seven to 15 to it, it's a roller coaster. Um, and at the moment, they've skyrocketed over the past 12 months. They've gone up every single month. They've gone from about 2.9 or some 2.7% to well over six. So they've more than doubled, which means the repayments on the loan have also more than doubled. So here you go. Let's say we're getting a loan of $643,500 at a variable rate at 6.79% interest and principal. So this means paying off the home and the interest at the same time, which is what you want to do. Over 30 years, so this is the 30 year contract. This is 30 years of your life that you have to sacrifice. Most people do 25, which means your monthly repayments are going to be more because you're trying to pay this home off quicker. But let's just give it the maximum, 30 year loan rate to give you the minimum, smallest monthly repayments possible. Your estimated repayments will be about $4,191 per month. Okay, so let's break this down. I have my spreadsheet here. Annual salary, 71516 This is well above what most people earn in Australia. A median salary, $71,000, is what a manager, is what uh, you know, a lot of corporate people earn, people that have probably gone to university, studied for many years, finished their school, paid their school fees as well. Uh, a lot of people have uh, university debt as well that they're paying off for many, many, many years. Um, this takes a long time to achieve. Like you don't come out of university and go straight to a $71,000 job. You might start in the 55 to 60 if you're lucky. Then it progresses from there over a number of years. So to reach this figure, it's not instant. It takes a long time. So by the time you're, you know, you're starting to get a little bit older, maybe drawing onto your, getting close to your 30s, you might start to earn this. So, and not everybody does, guys. Some people earn a lot more, yes, but I'm talking about the average middle working class, the majority of people, we have people in, you know, a poorer socioeconomic status and people in a very wealthy socioeconomic status. But those two are about this big, whereas the middle is the biggest part of the population. This is where we all sit. This is the average person. So we're going to pay tax on that every single year. So that tax bracket where we sit, the more you earn, the more this goes up. So the more tax you pay uh, is $13,709.70 per year. So now what you're left with in your pocket after working an entire year is $57,806. So that's per year. So that's this figure, subtract this figure. This is what you're left with, which a monthly breakdown leaves you with $4,446.46. Okay, let's just do a little bit of sub subtracting here. This figure minus your mortgage, monthly repayment of $4,191. Remember, $4,991. You can see you're not left with a lot of money. Okay, groceries, which is what we just did in our video. 
$740, that's the average in Australia. I'm looking up at statistics here. So, in Australia, I wonder if I can move this. That's in my way, that's no good. Uh, there we go, sorry, I had to minimize that, guys. Um, for the average household, the average spent a week in groceries in 2022 is now 100, so, this is in 2022, this probably actually went up, is $185 a week. If you guys remember, we bought three bags, three bags, and we paid $205. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. $205 for that grocery shop at a cheaper store with discounted prices, discounted, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm, I'm using this figure, okay, so, what we paid here is more because that would be about $800 a month. I'm going off the figure last year, $185 a week, which brings us to $740, which is well under, well under what we paid. And to be honest, there's only me and my wife. There's two of us. And we probably, most times we spend double that. We only bought three bags. Normally we go there and we'll buy five to six bags. That will actually last us the week. These three bags, I'll probably go back to Coles in a couple of days. Or sorry, Aldi, whatever. And I'll go and buy a few more bags. And then you know, for the week, my weekly expense for groceries will increase. So this is a very reserved figure, as I've done with every single one here. I've gone way under what probably is in reality spent, what most families spent. Let's keep going because this video is going to be getting a bit long. Electric bill. So electric bill is $100 a month, give or take a few dollars. And just to prove it to you, there you go, guys, 102 dollars a month. We just got our most recent one literally yesterday. That one's 120, so it's a little bit more. Um, we use the heater. It gets a bit cold here in, in Toowoomba in the winter, so we use the heater a little bit more. But let's just go on average of 100. Some people, depending on the appliances they have, what they use, they can spend well in excess of that. If they have pools, if they have, you know, hot water pumps and all sorts of different systems, they can spend two, three hundred a month. It's, again, I'm going below. So that's your electric bill. Subtract that from your monthly. Let's go to water bill, which is paid every, every three months. The bill is every three months. And ours, which is pretty much the same everywhere, you pay rates, uh, water rates. So it's a connection fee, a fixed charge that you can't, doesn't matter how much water you use, you have to pay that connection fee, that service fee. So billed every three months equals about, sorry, I really, $153 a month. Again, to prove that. So over three months, we paid $460. $460 for three months divided by three leaves you $153 per month. That's what you have to have. All right, now let's go to council rates. So in the Philippines here, land tax. Build every six months. So half yearly, right, of $191. <coughs> So the rates, if you divide that over six months, our rates, $1,148. Right there, guys. $1,148 divided by six leaves you $191. Okay? So let's just see. In pesos, that's 7,122 pesos a month that you have to have just for land tax and all these other ones. So I'll go back a little bit, actually. Your mortgage, so... In pesos, the mortgage payments monthly, 156,000 pesos. Your groceries, a minimum of 27,000 pesos. And then your electric bill, a minimum of 3,700 pesos per month. Your water bill, a minimum of 5,600, 700, uh, 5,700 pesos per month. Your land tax, in pesos, a minimum of 7,122 pesos per month. Now, remember, we live in a regional regional city, Toowoomba. It's not one of the capitals. So we pay a little bit less than what you would in the capital cities. Now, again, why I'm emphasizing the capital cities is because most people from Southeast Asia or any other country from Europe, whoever moved to Australia, they go to the major three capital cities. They go to Melbourne, Sydney, or Brisbane. That's where the higher paying jobs are. So remember, if you live in a regional city or a regional town, your expenses may be a little bit less, but so are the salaries. So 
it just there's there's no difference it balances out you go to a more expensive city you earn more but you pay more it's irrelevant honestly so that that just cancels out let me continue let's go to fuel based on statistical weekly average what most aussies spend the distances in australia are vast so people drive a lot to get to work there's very long and uh long and far commutes according to statistics is four hundred dollars per month so a hundred dollars a week and here it is where is it average no that's rent sorry i'm gonna have to minimize this again i believe this is it so according to the australian automobile association the AAA. uh Household paid a weekly average of $100.39 for fuel between April and June in 2022 at a 26.4% increase compared to the first three months of the year. So this is in 2022, guys, this went up. This is higher now than it was back then. Inflation, of course, it's brought everything up. So again, I've put in a, a reduced value. I've rounded down. Okay, let's just say 400 a month. Your fuel is 14,800 pesos per month. Let's keep going. Insurances, home contents and car insurance. Guys, how it works here, if you're not aware, the way it works here in Australia is if you have a mortgage on a property, you have to have home and contents insurance, right? The bank has taken a $643,000 risk on you to be able to maintain your house without burning it down or crashing through it with your car or you know whatever accident may happen. Now. If they've taken that risk, they require you to have insurance on the home. So that way, if something was to happen and the house was to be demolished or if, you know, if a major accident happened where the house needed to be rebuilt, their investment is covered. So you have to pay this. You cannot get away without having a home that's under loan that you owe money for that if something happens, you can't get insurance on because then you're stuck with a debt and no house and the bank has nothing to even sell or take from you to be able to recoup their investment. So, um, car, home, and contents insurance. This is this is all very important here in Australia. Everything's very by the book and very, you know, it. it you can't escape these fees. You have to pay them. So, this is the cheapest that I could find. Now, I have two cars, so this is including two cars and the home, right? I pay three hundred ninety-five dollars per month. I searched very hard. And for a very long time with this, uh, with many different companies to try and get the best possible deal, if I bundled all of our assets into an insurance company and Suncorp was actually the best. They gave me the best possible price. So anybody else out there, they won't find a cheaper price. This is probably the best that you'll get. $395 per month, which is again, 14,706 pesos per month. Now let's go to phone and internet. Again, I've given a very reduced value here, a very reserved value of $80 per month, 2,900, all right, 3,000 pesos per month. Phone and internet. If you have prepaid, you're not on a plan, you might have a $30 recharge, and then you might have $50 for internet if you want like a reasonable plan, you know, with, with good data, with good speeds, downloads and uploads. That's what it'll be here. I pay more, my wife works from home, I need to have a very solid, reliable connection here at home, so I pay for the upper end uh, of the NBN, of the fiber optic internet, um, and I also have a 4G backup in case the infrastructure, the, 4, uh, the NBN decides to drop out, so she can keep working. So I pay, total for my phone plan, and my phone and my internet, I pay about $180 per month. So more than double this figure, more than double for phone and internet. So again, and most people will pay this most people will have strong nbn connections probably in the upper realms of the plans uh they got a family with children they're all using they're playing their video games they're streaming youtube netflix so they they need the data they need the connectivity they pay more so they'll pay similar to what i pay about 160 to 180 dollars per month more than double so let's just say the low value is again what have we got here yeah, 3,000 pesos per month. I've added in gas in yellow and a question mark because some people might have no gas appliances, some people have all gas appliances, maybe except for the oven, for hot water, for cooking, all that sort of stuff. We have mainly electric, so our electric bill covers most of that. And we have gas hot water for our hot water heating, and we don't pay much at all. It's, it's $20 a month if you calculate it over the whole year. We buy two gas bottles, 
Uh, we have them swapped once every year. They last us all year, it's cheap. So I wouldn't even worry about that. But again, 750 pesos per month. Uh, vehicle maintenance. Vehicle maintenance is an important one. Uh, this is, strictly speaking, an oil change, oil filter, and a stamp on a logbook. That's all it is. This price is $46 per month. So if you do it every six months, the average cost of maintaining a vehicle is car servicing, all right? So this is another website. 216 for a minor service and $370 for a logbook service. I took the 200 and I think I put $280 ish depending on the vehicle. Some require more oil, some require less. Because, so it can vary. I did a median value of about $280 or so dollars, uh, every six months, which works out, if you divide it, works out to be about $46 per month. Just for, a, just for an oil change. This isn't vehicle registration, this isn't tires, brakes, uh, anything that goes wrong with the car, replacement of batteries, alternators, uh, chains, uh, the gaskets, whatever may happen. So this is a bog stock. This whole expenses, this essential expenses is just the bare minimum you could hope to pay in your life. This is like the bare essentials if you, you know, live very, very frugally and yeah, and you, you really don't, you don't have much of a life, it, you know, it's not a lot of fun. So you got 1,712 uh, 1, pesos per month just for, you need to have that aside to be able to do your service every six months for your vehicle to keep it healthy, of course. Now we've got expenses not essential. So I've added entertainment, dinner once a month, only if you go out once a month to a nice restaurant, you take your partner, not even a family, this is two people, guys, I've done this for two people, uh, you've got $80 per month. And in a good restaurant, you'll pay more than that. But let's just say $80 per month for two nice meals and two drinks. That's it. No dessert, no entree. That's it. Uh, that's 3,000 pesos per month. Once. Going out once. Home, yard, and car care. So I'm talking about you wash your car every now and then. You need fuel for your lawnmower. Uh, you might need whippersnipper wire for your whippersnipper. Uh, you know, a bit of lube, a new spark plug, or whatever you need for yard care, home care, washing your car, little bits and pieces which you'll always spend. You need to replace a light globe. A light globe goes, or an LED downlight, or a little bit of paint, or you need to patch it, whatever. You know? very, very um, reserved value of $50 per month. You'll spend more than this 100%. So you got 1,860 pesos per month. Personal care, creams, uh, you know, exfoliation, face scrubs, makeup, you know, what women spend on stuff. Men don't really care, up to whatever, I'm just ugly. That's, but that's beside the point. Um, so I've said about another $50 per month. So 1,800 pesos per month. That's what you'll spend, minimum. Uh, then we've got clothes. If you need to buy work boots, socks, underwear, bras, shoes, whatever you may need, you rip your pants, you go and you buy some new ones. Um, a hat, a beanie, you lose something, whatever, $70 per month. So 2,600 pesos per month. Again, that's, this, this highlighting is really not working guys, sorry. But, so there you go, that's, that's a rough expense. Now I've put in unexpected expenses here. Medical, right? Medical is about $102.91 per month. So 3,800 pesos per month. This is judging now, some people might, might be healthier, some people might never go to the doctor, some people might have to go two, three, four times a month if you have, you know, any kind of ailments or illnesses. This is, again, based on the statistics of, this is the rent, sorry, out-of-pocket problems. Okay, so this is PwC, a big uh, analytics company here in Australia for health matters. I don't know what I've just done. Health matters, out-of-pocket healthcare. So, how big is the out-of-pocket problem? It tells us here that Australians pay for 17% of total health expense uh, health expenditure directly through out of pocket expenses this adds up to 29.8 billion dollars or about 123 1235 dollars per person per year so we have medicare we have that system but it doesn't cover everything we still have to pay out of pocket if we go to a doctor or if we go to a chemist or you know it doesn't cover everything we we have to pay so this is this is the figure here so i've divided that per month again which gives me a figure of $102.91 or 3,800 pesos per month. 
for medical. Now, another thing here in Australia, which you can get quite a lot of, is fines and penalties. We've got cameras littered all over the place, red light cameras, speeding cameras, we've got police targeting speeding, you've got roadworthy um, checks, so if your vehicle is registered, it needs to be considered roadworthy. Um, if you park in the wrong spot, you could get a, a parking fine or a ticket, all these things. This one, I did a personal anecdote. This is what happened to me when I moved to Queensland last year. Uh, we were driving along the Gold Coast Highway looking for properties. I think we're actually going to look at this house on that day. Um, my wife had her seatbelt twisted. So the camera recognized that her seatbelt was twisted. It wasn't flat, it wasn't straight across her body. And it took a photo of her and labeled it unrestrained. So it was, she was considered an unrestrained passenger because the seatbelt wasn't worn appropriately or in the designed manner. I paid $465 for that ticket. I've only added this in once. Now this will happen. You, 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 know, you might go three years without a fine. You might have three, four, five fines in one year. You know, when you're not concentrating, you run a, you know, you enter an intersection on a red or you speed a little bit and you don't even realize you're going downhill, the camera will catch you. Uh, if you have something unsecured in the back of your car, I got another fine last year because I had a ladder that was laying flat in the back of the car. No way it could have come out, but he still fined me $360 because it wasn't strapped down. It could have flown out and killed someone apparently. So I've only given you one fine that I've had and these, these can happen. These, yeah, it's pretty easy to get. So $465 divided by the 12 months for the year is $38.75 per month, which is $1,400 per month. Now guys, this here is your absolute basics to live. This is what you can expect. This is everything that I could think of and I probably missed a lot. I've got some afterthoughts which I'll show you later here, um, a, bit, a bit lower in this, this section. But let's just say at the moment, we subtract all of this, subtract all of that from our median good salary, our good wage, we are negative. We are minus $2,261 per month, per month. This is monthly. So we need to find 84,192 pesos to be able to pay for the basics from one salary, right? We're already in the negative. Now, if you have two people working, let's say my wife and I work, it's very, very, very unlikely, like I was saying earlier, that both of you will earn this figure. One of you might, one of you will probably earn significantly less, especially if you have children, if you're working part-time, if you're you know, taking care of kids, putting them in daycare, which is another thing I've got down there um, in this spreadsheet a bit lower, which again, really isn't worth it. The amount that childcare costs versus how much you'll earn working three days a week won't even pay for that. So it's almost not worth it. You're better off having your partner stay at home and you trying to earn more money, which I'm going to show you later how that sort of works out. But anyway, getting back to it, this is the figure. You need this money on top to be able to pay for all of that, right? For your bare necessities. This instigates that your partner needs to work a second job, right? You need, you need your partner to work because you have all this to pay for. Now, let's keep going, all right? Let's say you have two people earning the median salary, right? You might, okay, you might have, no. Oh, a couple of thousand dollars a month, maybe. But the reality is you're both not gonna be earning this money. And the reality is if you're a sole income, maybe one of you earns more, so the one that earns more goes to work, maybe let's say $100,000, and the other one stays home, looks after the kids. Um, if you don't wanna have kids, you both go and work, you chase your careers, you make a lot of money, and you sacrifice a family. It's about what you want in life, and this is what we're here to challenge, what's really important. Uh, let's keep going though, afterthoughts. So, tires, brakes, furniture, home repairs, so skilled professionals, like I mentioned earlier, if you have any pets, vet bills, and then you've got your, uh, if you have kids, this is your fee, um, car payments. So, as I mentioned before, we don't have any car debt, we don't have car loans, so we, um, we don't have monthly payments. This would actually come out and go into this section up here if we had car payments, which, most people do, most people have car payments, so this would add to this figure, but let's just put it in the afterthoughts anyway, just to be kind. Uh, let's see, tires, all this purple, everything here highlighted in purple, what I've done is I've calculated over a three year period, so divided over 36 months. 
right? So not every year I've given it, you don't change your tires every year, you might once every three years, depending how much you drive. Your brakes, about the same, it's roughly once every three years. <laughs> Furniture, uh, if you need a new clothesline out the back, or if you know you buy a new desk or a new mattress, or if you buy some outdoor furniture, or you know if something gets destroyed, you might need some stools, or you need you know these you need to have money for these things. So I've calculated that uh, the expenditure for tires it's about two hundred and fifty dollars a tire, thousand uh, dollars it's a thousand dollars to have your tires changed, including labor and fitting and balancing, alignment, all that sort of stuff. And even that's probably, depending on the car you have, that's probably cheap. 37,000 pesos, brakes. They're about $1,200 for materials and labor. 44,677 pesos. Furniture, depending on your taste and depending how much you like to spend, because you have to buy furniture at some stage, you can't move into an empty house. 1,000 to $5,000 plus, it depends who you are, how much money you're willing to spend. I've taken the smallest, the 1,000 over three years, 37,000 pesos. Home repairs, skilled professionals, a pipe bursts in the ceiling, you need a plumber to come and fix it, or something happens to your concrete slab, or whatever. Let's just say you'll spend a minimum of $1,000 every three years, which is 37,000 pesos. Vet bills, this is again a pretty reduced figure. Deworming, uh, if you need to, you know, take take your cat or, or dog for a nail clip, uh, vaccinations, uh, any health problems that they might have if they're sick, you know, $500, that's, that's incredibly cheap. You probably spend more than that every three years. 18,615 pesos. So divide that over three years is 116, uh, then by 36 months, because we're doing monthly, $116 per month roughly is what you need to have, which is 4,300 pesos per month. For these things. Now we haven't even spoken about savings yet, but that's probably a topic for another time. Children. To raise one child per year costs $12,823 here in Australia. Again, let me show you uh, the yearly cost of raising a child. Kids report in 2023. The estimated annual average spend on children is $12,823 per household. So let's go back again and we divide that by, well, 12. So what that ends up being is uh, $1,068 per month. So their food, right? The above expenses only included me and my wife, two people, and we have two cars. So again, I haven't put everything in. Um, so, yep, so you add that on. You add on the, the car payments, which most people will spend a minimum of $100 a week on a car loan, that's to get, yeah, I don't think I know any new car that you can get for under $100 a week. Usually it's more like the $150, $160. Uh, so you're looking at $4,800 uh, $14, or 15000 pesos at a minimum per month on a car loan. So you add all this up, the purple over 36 months, and then the car payments per month, and then what having a child, one child cost to have here in Australia at 40,000 pesos per month to raise, school, stationery, books, uh, uniforms, clothes, extracurricular activities, whatever they may do, that's about right. Now, your realistic total ends up at 3,000, sorry, negative $3,963 per month, which is negative $1,400, one hundred and forty seven thousand five hundred and forty six pesos per month negative you need this to be able to pay for the realistic expenses of your life right and this is still all reserve value so now you see at seventy one thousand at a very good salary if you're earning four thousand four hundred and forty six per month you need another person to pretty much earn the same salary again, which is highly unlikely that two people are earning, a couple is earning that much money, right, per household. This, where do you get this money from? And then two major things that I forgot about, guys, as well, which I didn't even bother adding to the price or calculating. Uh, car registration for one vehicle is about $700 per year. That's how much we pay. So that's $58 per month, right? Then child care, because with these expenses, your partner has no choice but to work. It's a minimum of $70 per day, right? It, it's, it's a lot more, but that's, let's just say it's a minimum. And let's say only three days a week times four for the month, right? Here are the expenses for child care. Long daycare, child care center, $70 at a minimum, 
to $188 per day per day times three so I took the smaller value I took $70 per day and I multiplied it by three days a week so your wife can go or your partner whoever can go and work for those three days so those three days times four for the month is $840 per month so add that plus the 58 to this 3963 you're almost at negative five thousand dollars so in reality the second income earner has to earn more than this more right or the other way around which you know you one income earner has a really strong income of about a hundred thousand dollars and the other one doesn't work at all and raises the kids but again to get to that level it takes decades, years and years and years of hard work and building experience and your resume to be able to earn that $100,000 plus job, right? And now, just for, just for laughs, let's say I've got my tax calculator here. Da, da, da. So I did it at the conversion rate of uh, yesterday, 37.23 pesos. So everything that I did on this spreadsheet was converted at that 37 pesos to a dollar rate all through here, guys. Now, what was I saying? I was saying something about if, let's say, I earn 100,000 a year, my wife doesn't earn anything at all because she's staying at home to raise the kids, right? Let's see if I'm getting, if I'm even getting close to matching this figure here or even this figure for the bare essentials. Let's just forget all of this here and let's just think about this all right I'd go and earn a hundred thousand dollars per year let's see if I can cover this let's see what have I got here so the estimated tax calculator on your taxable income so I input this earlier just to try and make this shorter even though this has gone on for ages so I'm sorry but one hundred thousand dollars per year now I pay twenty two thousand nine hundred sixty seven dollars tax right so let's do that calculation real quick one hundred thousand just a solid six-figure salary minus twenty two thousand nine hundred and sixty seven dollars per year so now I'm left with seventy seven thousand dollars and seventy seven thousand dollars all right compared to being left with previously I was left with fifty seven so I'm earning twenty thousand dollars more in my pocket so if we if we divide that by, we don't have to, sorry. So $20,000 more per year. So 20,000, let's divide that by 12. So we have it across our 12 months. Gives us an extra 1,000 right there. Gives us an extra $1,666 per month at $100,000 per year, right? I'm still negative. I'm still negative. I still need to find $600 if I earn $100,000 a year for these minimal expenses which are completely reserved and held back. Even these figures will increase a bit. Um, I still need to find $600 per month to pay for these, just these expenses here. I'm not including all of these expenses at $100,000 a year, guys. I still, I'm still negative 600, which is negative, I don't know, 27,000 pesos at $100,000 per year, which most people would look at a person that earns $100,000 a year and go, wow, that is like, that is the figure, that six-figure salary, it's, that's amazing. Doesn't cut it. Does not cut it, guys, not one bit. Now, I'm going to be honest here, this figure for mortgage, is, is can be wildly different depending on the person you are. I'm talking about people that in my age bracket between 20 to maybe 35, if you don't have, you know, if you're not a trust fund child, if you don't have rich parents that can help you out, that give you a deposit for a house who are, who are loaded. I'm talking about average working class people with no help, no assistance, right? If you want to get a house, not a unit, if you want the Australian dream that is sold so majestically and so heavily to everybody that you know come here and work and you know you can do it you can do it well you all right you can do it you can do it can you um this is this is the reality guys if you want a home the australian dream to own it now i've added in this rent here because rent is probably half price based on rent uh, da, 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 da. let's have a look rent 
No, it's here somewhere, guys. Sorry, just... Oh, sorry, that, that's my insurances that I was paying, so I added that up, $395. Anyway, not relevant. Now, we're done there. Oh, where's rent? Can't find rent. I know I had it, guys. No, tax calculator. Sorry, guys, bear with me a sec. I know I... There it is. No. There it is. My apologies, everybody. Okay, according to the most recent CoreLogic data, which is, they're the leaders in analytics for the property market here in Australia, across the country is, I took the lowest value of $577 per week. That's the rent of a house. Um, so if you take that, right, and you forget about the mortgage, you just rent, then once you finish paying rent at the end of the month on this salary, you might have $46 left in your bank account for savings. Again, not including all this. This is just this section up here. If you're renting, you might have that, but that's not the point. Australia, the, the idea of this is that everybody can achieve the, achieve the, the dream of having their own home, of having a family home where they can raise their children, they can be their own. So th this, who cares about this? Yeah, you can come and live here a little bit cheaper if you rent. That's not the point. The reality that I'm trying to show is this here, all of this. Um, now, I haven't even calculated when we try to book a, you know, if we go on a holiday, try to be able to afford to go on a holiday. We haven't booked our flights yet. We haven't saved the money to cover the expenses of the mortgage while we're away. We haven't saved the spending money for while we're away um, and any other bits and pieces that might cost along the way there, you know, uh, your accommodation, your transport. The, it, so guys, when, when we go and we travel and, and we've worked hard, we've worked, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours per week, sometimes both of us have worked that much and we've just managed to scrape a little bit of extra money that's all we've got like what we have there is because we've sacrificed so much time and exhausted ourselves to the point of where it's unhealthy to try and do that this is Australia guys this is what it takes to live in this country we spend our entire lives so many years working to be able to try and reach our retirement and then in retirement, these problems don't go away. Yeah, you get concessions. You might get a few discounts on things. But if you don't have a paid off home, if you've been unfortunate where you've had, you know, you've been unable to earn these strong incomes, like I was saying in another video of mine, um, I mean, what hope do you have? There's not a lot of hope. And then to top it off, you've been miserable for the past 40, 50, 60, however long you've worked. Some people work to 70. You don't get your pension until 65 in this country, uh, which is nothing. Your pension's like $1,600 a month. Try and live on $1,600 a month on a pension here in Australia. You'll be on the street. You're homeless. You have no food. You're a beggar. And you've worked that long and paid your taxes to the government who's willingly taken it to be an old, useless eater that no one cares about. Guys, this is the reality that we live in here in the Western culture, and I've got a very good video that really targets it. I attack it pretty hard, and I think you guys should check that video out. It really says a lot, and it, I think it highlights the way that we live. It's not all rainbow, sunshine, and roses. Honestly, it's a miserable life, and like I was saying in a different video, I see, I see people in poorer or developing countries, quotation marks, smile a lot more than my wife and I do here and this is the point of us doing what we're trying to do challenging the status quo and the societal norms what's established in this slave driven system where we're all just cogs in a machine and this pretty much proves it and we only get one shot at this this consciousness that we have is is it's dying from the day we're born we're thrust into this and we're pre-programmed to chase all of this sort of thing and we forget the real important things. We forget our spirit, we forget who we are. We don't know who we are. And we wonder why we're miserable in this country of opportunity and wealth. This isn't wealth, guys. This 
just food for thought. Anyway, I'll leave it with you and I uh, do apologize for the length of this video, but I just really wanted to get into it and show you the reality of our experience in the Western culture. The stress, the, the chaos, the, the chase and the grind and the exhaustion. This is what you have to face if this is what you want. So be prepared, get mentally and physically ready because you're in for, you're in for a wild ride. Whether that's something you want, you think you want, if it's something you may like or you may hate, maybe there's only one way to find out, in which case, come on over, but think about it, think about it before you do it, is what I'm saying. There's a reason that many foreigners and most of us are coming to your beautiful country with your beautiful, genuine, kind, loving people. Because we've realized that the way that this society is heading, it's heading for annihilation. Over there, you guys are happy. You smile, you say hello, you have the time to stop and talk to someone. Here we ignore each other. We're rushing for money, we've got to get to work, we've got no time. Just be careful. Be careful and find out what it is you truly want.